good evening, good afternoon, good evening, I don't know. Uh, I feel like most of my audience, uh, yeah, these updates come out pretty late at night, so, you know, uh, just going to, uh, you know, uh, drop a video about the new update. Uh, again, I said in my Hong Lu, <clears throat> excuse me, I said in my Hong Lu video that I probably, like the Hong Lu ID review video, that I probably was not going to be doing the Mirror Dungeon in, like, record my Mirror Dungeon 2 run, uh, because I feel like it would be super boring, but maybe I will, it depends on how I feel at the end of this episode. Uh, you know, at the end of this. But, as of this minute right now, uh, I'm just intending to review what, uh, what the kits are, what the new kits are. Uh, generally is what I do. Uh, I look at the new kits, then I pull gacha, and then sometimes I test them. Uh, if you're not super familiar with the, uh, formula of these, <laughs> these types of videos. Uh, so I generally go into, a dispense tab, look at the numbers, uh, see see if I was right or wrong about anything. Sometimes I'm pleasantly surprised. Sometimes I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, and, you know, let down a little bit. Like, for example, uh, uh, well, one thing that I was, like, pleasantly surprised about uh, in the past was uh, Spice Bush Passive. Uh, I was expecting this in the past to deal 15%-ish damage is what I was speculating on his uh, kit reveal. Uh... But it ended up being 30% damage, and I was like, dude, that's crazy, right? Uh, and inversely, like, one thing I was kind of disappointed in the past with, like, I thought that Sun Shower was going to be a little bit better than he ended up being. Uh, one, like, one example is, like, I thought that this skill, when it said, like, Tails Hit Inflict Fragile on the kit reveal, I was like, okay, he might be able to compete with Rabbit, right? He could be very interesting. Uh, and in my head, I was thinking, like, you know, this could be, like, two or even three maybe is what i was looking at and then when the kick got when the numbers got revealed in game and it was one fragile that was a little bit uh upsetting to see for me but you know that's that's basically the structure of the video sometimes i'm pleasantly surprised sometimes i'm not uh but uh we'll see what happens so we'll claim our maintenance comp here uh get rid of some notifications and uh we'll hop right into the uh we'll hop right into the unit review really quick uh i also did buy the limbus pass <laughs> bro this game is pay to win like they they want my money man uh but uh, copium i did uh i did recently donate uh blood and plasma again so i get paid for you know blood and plasma donations so you know i can cope and uh <laughs> i can cope and be like well i mean you know i did a good thing so I'll treat myself a little bit to the Limbus Pass, you know? I'll treat myself a little bit. So eventually I'll claim all this stuff when I get around to it, but that's not why you're here. Uh, you're here to see uh, if these hopefully lived up to expectations. I'm, I actually, you know, I, I re in my video, I rated uh, Hong Lu as a, as like a four-ish, five-ish. Uh, out of 10, just retro, like, prospectively. Again, those scores are not how good I think the ID is going to be, for the most part. Uh, they're more like, how, how relevant, uh, to the meta will I, do I think that their kits will be, right? Because again, we have no numbers at all, so it's impossible to say, right? So like, one example is like, when Gripper Sinclair was, uh, was announced, and they revealed his kit, and we had no numbers people uh initially thought that he was going to be mostly a burn support right because all of his skills have a burn on them uh especially his skill too when you see this uh you know when you see this uh with no numbers and you go tails hit inflict burn on hit inflict burn on every single coin right you go your instinct is like oh this guy's a burn id oh maybe burn is going to be viable right maybe burn is going to be relevant right and then if target has x plus bleed inflict x burn right and you know uh people people on uh on the reveal were like you know maybe he's you know he's okay but burn is not really that good right now so i can't really see him being that good right uh but when he released obviously his numbers were turbo nuts uh and there's no way to predict that right so when i when i rate uh when i rate ids 
Uh, when I rate IDs in my uh, Twitter, like the Limbus Twitter reviews, uh, it's not about like it's not about wholly how good I think the ID will be. It's just how good and fluid I think their kit will play, and how you know how much synergy I could see them having, and how much team play there is, and how how likely would I be to include them in my lineup over other IDs, right? Uh, mostly. Uh, because again, it, there's no way to tell on numbers, right? We're missing numbers, which is one of the most important things. So, you know, I could be very wrong if Honglu has insane numbers. Uh, but, you know, uh, I wouldn't be super surprised. But we'll start with, uh, Sinclair here. Talisman Claire. Uh, I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of excited for this guy. I think we should read passive first. Uh, or talisman first, just to see what the critical mass count is. At 6 plus count, remove all talisman and take fixed damage by its count. Okay, so in the story, I did check, in the story it was 9 plus, so they nerfed it for Sinclair, which is like, uh, kind of, it's obviously kind of a bad thing, uh, obviously, but uh, 6 plus is still workable, right? Because on hit, inflict rupture by the count, uh, Inflicting 6 Rupture on hit every single time you hit someone is really, really good, uh, obviously. But the consequence of having a lower count is that uh, he'll hit critical mass more often, so he's going to be resetting down to 1 or down to 0 more often, right, than if the count was higher. Uh, because, you know, it would take you longer to max stack and whatever. So. You know, 6 plus seems kind of like a very safe move from PM. Uh, I'm okay with it, personally. Uh, it's not like completely unplayable or anything. Uh, and then let's take a look. 5 plus 5, so 10. Uh, that's pretty average. Uh, that's pretty much spot on average. 5 base power is a little bit above average for a skill 1 though. Uh, which is kind of neat. Uh, usually they hover around 4. So 5 plus 5 instead of 4 plus 6. He will clash a little bit more consistently than average, which is appreciated. Uh, and then 5 plus rupture gained 1 talisman. I feel like it might be a little bit hard to achieve early on to in, into a battle, but we'll see his skill 2. Uh, because his skill 2 and his passive seem to be the most... Uh, what will fuel his talisman gain the most, right? So let's take a look here. 1-1-1. One, one, one. So I was, I was a, pretty much spot on on this one. Uh, I was pretty much spot on. Each of these gains 1. And then target us 3 plus rupture, gain an extra 1. Alright, so I... This is basically what I expected. Uh, and let's see, 4 plus 3 by 3. So that's what, 13 max power? That's pretty good. Uh, not, nothing like stellar. Uh, which, you know, I wasn't expecting anything stellar. Uh, from his numbers, personally. But, again, his, his rupture contribution is kind of tangible. Uh, the only problem is when you have high skill uh, coin count on a rupture team, you'll start eating count a lot faster. Uh, I'll get into it a little bit later once we start talking about Hong Lu, but uh, but yeah, having more coins is not always better on a rupture team. But I'll make an exception for this because it also applies rupture every time it hits. It doesn't say it applies rupture, but because the hits give him talisman. Talisman says on hit inflict rupture, right? So technically he does inflict rupture. He inflicts like ramping rupture with this attack. So on hit he would inflict zero uh, on the first coin. Then he'd have one talisman. On hit he'd inflict one, then two. Uh, so it's it's like a pretty terrible amount of rupture, but it sets him up for his future turns. So, you know, about what I expected. And then skill three, five plus six by two. 5 plus 6 by 2 is 17, which is really, that's about right where you want to be. Again, I said it with, uh, I said it with, uh, Esong Spike Bush, uh, Spice Bush, uh, ID. His skill 3 is, uh, 18 max power. Uh, around the 17 to 18 mark is the break point where you start to not lose against pretty much all common clashes, right? Assuming you hit all tails, obviously, right? Uh... That's kind of the breakpoint where you, uh, where you start to not really lose against all, uh, all, all common clashes. So that is a very, very important, uh, breakpoint there. For a two-star, this seems excellent so far. Uh, it seems very promising. Uh, 
on hit spend five talisman on self give five talisman i actually really really like that this is because in the video i was like speculating okay you know maybe it's like one or two you know just like throw it on there i like that this is a high number because that means that again the the talisman on sinclair and the talisman on the enemy effectively do the same thing uh, when Sinclair has Talisman, he inflicts Rupture uh, when he hits stuff, and when the enemy has Talisman, they gain Rupture when they get hit. So if Sinclair has Talisman on him, and the enemy he's hitting has Talisman on him, it will basically double dip on both of them, and they'll gain an absurd amount of Rupture, right? And because this is a very high number, it means that he can eff effectively quote-unquote like bank Talisman on an enemy, uh, and it raises his effective, like, talisman cap, right? Because right now, critical mass is 6, but you could kind of, like, work around it, uh, it seems like, by, uh, giving Sinclair 5, then putting that 5 on an enemy, and then giving Sinclair another 5. So you could have, quote-unquote, like, 10 talisman, which is uh, the ideal scenario. I imagine most of the time it's not going to happen that way, but I like that mechanic. I kind of like this mechanic. And then if target has talisman inflict plus one rupture count that's about what i expected i hoped that this would be plus two but again this is a two star id so it's kind of wishful thinking you know <laughs> and then his defense skill i believe gives him talisman too yeah nothing spectacular here just uh just bread and butter defense skill sure uh offense level looks pretty low uh for level 35 but uh i mean you know, it, 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 uh, we're not really going to be worrying about offense level because the entire system is going to get reworked anyway uh, later. But his skills look pretty good. And then I believe his passive gives him talisman too. On hit, if the target had rupture, gain one talisman. But it's on resonance. It's on gluttony resonance. Uh, I mean, this passive would be super broken if it was on owned, uh, to be fair. Uh... If the target had rupture, game one talisman. I mean, like, this is a fantastic passive to get him ramping up quicker, uh, obviously, because this ID's main problem is obviously getting started. It's going to be a pretty slow setup, I imagine, to get talisman rolling, then put it on the enemy, uh, and then capitalize on it by gaining more talisman. It's going to be pretty slow. And obviously, I'm trying to, I I'm trying to, like, uh, I I'm mostly trying to review this ID, like, in a vacuum, because if we're being real, if we're being honest with ourselves, almost nobody's going to be using this guy over uh, N-Corp, Gripper Sinclair, uh, most of the time. Uh, but in a vacuum, he seems like a pretty decent Rupture support, if I'm going to be completely honest, right? Rupture is already, like, kind of a slower uh, debuff to kind of get rolling. Uh, so him being a slower setup ID is not really an issue because if you're making a rupture team, odds are you're going to be playing some more slowly, more methodically anyway, than just like balls to the wall, you know, Ninclair, self-destructive purge, 90 base power, you know, d turn on like the nitrous, you know, turbo boost straight forward through the enemy's health bar, right? Uh, so... Uh, I I don't think him being slow is uh, slow setup is really that much of an issue because one he's not going to be like the most meta relevant to be honest uh, let's be honest with ourselves and two because the team he fits into doesn't really mind him being a slower setup because the whole the whole mechanic is kind of a slow setup as it is right now so. Uh, beyond that, uh, I don't really know what Rupture ID, like, real Rupture IDs there are in the game, uh, that have Gluttony skills, uh, to be honest, because I, I have not really experimented with Rupture that much, it's just not really a relevant, uh, not really a relevant status effect as of now, so I haven't really experimented with it, uh, fully, like, I haven't ever made a team that's just solely around turboing out Rupture, uh, so I don't know if the passive, to be honest, I don't really know if the passive is super easy to activate on resonance, but I imagine if you activate on resonance, uh, if you activate the resonance and he, his skill two goes off, you'll gain a ton of talisman, obviously, which seems really, really good, right? Uh, other thoughts? Oh, I'll look at his uh, support passive. At the start of the combat phase, give highest resonance by two talisman to the ally with the most HP. Like, uh, on, it, again, it has to be on Resonance, because otherwise this would be super, super broken, right? 
giving talisman uh which is a unique buff basically so it's it's basically a free stacking buff that is uh that is like uh giving you more value ramping value every single turn right uh basically so this has to be on resonance in order for it to be balanced basically because he would have an extremely good support passive otherwise because you could use if it wasn't resonance you could use this generically and just give people talisman so that they gain flat bonus damage from the rupture every single time they attack which would be really really strong right so uh it it is what it is it has to be resonance for it to be balanced right so uh overall i think he's pretty uh i think he's pretty decent uh for a rupture team uh in the future i'll probably experiment with a rupture team uh because we have exciting rupture support uh from uh from the past like especially isong dim shredder which i still haven't thread spun uh you know i'm pretty poor on thread i'm sure we all are after the season reset so you know i haven't uh, i haven't had the time to thread spin him yet uh because i just haven't really found a use for him uh, again uh my main focus is like railway that's the most fun i have in this game so uh with no railway i don't really uh i just kind of hoard my thread I'll, I'll wait until up tie four releases right because i don't know how much thread that's gonna be for all i know it could be really really rough but uh sinclair seems pretty good honestly uh again if we're not considering the fact that gripper sinclair exists uh, he seems pretty good uh, for a rupture ID. Uh, I'm I'm pleasantly uh, not surprised. I'm not really surprised because I kind of anticipated a lot of the stuff uh, that would be going on in his kit when uh, when I made the uh, ID review video. So I'm not really surprised, but I'm I'm pleasantly uh, satisfied with uh, with PM. You know, after after giving us a bunch of like kind of kind of troll two stars, especially the slosh mile incident like that's that's rough ishmael enjoyers that is rough i'm sorry <laughs> but they finally wisened up and gave us a pretty good two star like this seems this seems like it's one of the best two stars in the game honestly uh it's just a shame that has to be on sinclair right but it is what it is uh anyways anything else 171 health is pretty chunky uh he's he's on like the tankier side which is appreciated of course 3 to 7, again, average speed range is about 3 to 6, so 3 to 7 is right where you want to be, pretty much. Uh, very, very nice, you know, uh, just plus 1 on the maximum is pretty much what I like to see on most IDs. Uh, so overall, yeah, I mean, this this looks pretty good. Uh, unironically, looks pretty good. Uh, I'm glad I rated him a 7, you know? <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I rated him a 7. I thought his coin powers would be a little lower, too. Like 17, 17 max or uh, 17 max coin power on his uh, on his skill three seems really good, uh, like astoundingly good for a two star, uh, for sure. So, I mean that's that's uh, that's very nice actually, because this will outclash most things, uh, most common things in the game. So that's pretty nice. And then uh, and then we have uh, Hong Lu. Hong Lu is going to be a peculiar case because either I'm my age is my my take is gonna age like wine or it's gonna age like milk. Uh and you know, I'm open to being wrong because Hong Lu has some serious uh potential, possibly. Because I was thinking about it more. Uh as I was mentioning in the Sinclair, uh in the Sinclair ID review that we just did, uh rupture kind rupture teams kind of don't want uh skills with a lot of coins because they will eat through the rupture count uh very quickly right uh unless the skills apply more count right and rupture count is obviously the hardest thing to come by uh if you're making a rupture team that's the most important thing to keep in mind is making sure your rupture stack survives right so hong lu having only two coins on a skill two and two coins on a skill three might honestly not be uh it might not be uh bad because Having less skills on a rupture ID or less coins on a rupture ID is not always a bad thing. Uh, in fact, it's probably a good thing to have less coins, right? So yeah, it's not completely awful. And again, if we're talking about like two coin skills that are really, really good, we have two coin skills that are really good, right? The what I'm thinking of when I say that is mostly Lob Corp Faust, right? Opportunistic Slash is an absolute beast 
an absolute beast of a skill three and it only has two coins but its max coin power is 20 plus it has a coin power bonus plus three if you took no damage last turn which is you know most of the time you're not taking damage last turn right so there is potential in two coin skills right and i'm not going to be entirely dismissive of them i was kind of in the past but again the more i thought about it uh since that video came out it could honestly be it could honestly be uh 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 better than having more coins right if his skills look like this right and if i recall correctly his skill three also gain gains coin power uh or final power i don't remember which one but it gains power uh if he's above a certain hp threshold right so if it looks something like opportunistic slash and his skill two also looks something similar to opportunistic slash then we are in a good spot right we're in a good spot so let's take a peek here uh in dispense and hopefully uh honestly my hope is that i'm wrong uh, about this ID because again he does look pretty fun to play with. Uh, I do I, I his drain tanky playstyle does seem pretty appealing. So uh, first things first five plus six. Uh, uh, basically uh, around the average, slightly above average, but you know uh, pretty good. Base power of five is you know appreciated obviously. Uh, so that's nice. Coin power plus two to targets with five plus rupture. Not the most unreasonable thing to accomplish in a rupture team rupture teams do not have uh trouble stacking rupture potency obviously again the the hardest thing to stack in rupture is count because everything depletes rupture count right every time you uh every time you use an attacking skill right every time you hit an enemy it reduces the rupture count right so it's kind of a real struggle to in to uh to keep your rupture count up so you know rupture five plus rupture is not as unachievable as it might seem at first glance uh so that's okay uh skill two hopefully this has good coin power right because he's going to be using it quite a bit this is his bread and butter lifesteal uh skill if i remember correctly so hopefully we're chilling five plus five by two so 15 max that's pretty good uh, it's not, like, really good. I would have liked to see it, like, 6 plus 5 plus uh, 5 by 2, so you could hit that 16 threshold, uh, because that's, like, what most enemies top out at. Like, like I said with Sinclair before, uh, with his skill 3 is 17 max power, uh, most enemies kind of top out at around 16, so if, uh, if Hong Lu uh, is to clash against those, uh, you know, most enemy skills, he would probably win. But against, like, the larger basic enemy skills, it, he might have some trouble. But uh, it's not bad. Like, it, it obviously could have been worse, but it could have been a little better, right? Anyways, uh, inflict two rupture. Inflict two rupture. If target has 10 plus rupture, heal by 50% of damage dealt. 50% of damage dealt, and obviously he does it twice. And the second hit is hits harder. The second the second coin hits harder than the first if you roll heads on the uh, first coin. So he will gain a, a significant amount of healing actually from this. I feel like uh, I don't know if this uh, if this figure counts the actual rupture damage as well as the skills own damage. Uh, that's you know that has yet to be seen. Whoopsie, I uh, accidentally clicked off. Uh, that has yet to be seen if that he heals off of that, because if he can heal off of half the damage of a giant rupture stack, then that could be cool. Uh, but if not, I mean, it's not that big of a deal. I feel like the skill will probably do decent damage no matter what. Uh, not like crazy damage, but I think the way it's worded, I feel like he would heal off of the giant rupture stack, right? So overall, seems like a decent skill too. Could have been a smidge better. Uh, but yeah, I can't say I'm unsatisfied with this. And then the skill three, hopefully again, I'm praying that this is similar coin power to opportunistic slash, because that is like the model to two coin nuke skill, right? That is kind of what, uh, this Honglu needs in order to be like a competitor to, uh, Kurkumo and Ting Tang, right? So I pray, I pray. 8 plus 4 by 2. 
So 16 max. Oosh. At 80% or more health, gain coin power plus one. So it would be 18 max. Uh, I mean, it's not bad. Like, on, on, on paper, like, objectively, it's not bad. Again, the 16 threshold is right about where you want to be, uh, give or take. So, you know, that's kind of like the, quote-unquote, the magic number, I guess. It's like around 16. Don't quote me on that. That's just kind of like my gut feeling. Uh, so, I mean, he does hit the benchmark. And then 18, uh, if he gets the 80% or more HP, 18 is like... Uh, mostly outclashing everything, uh, most common skills besides, like, you know, Ichthys Blood Beam and, like, you know, uh, some of those skills that are not really designed to be clashed with outside of egos, like, specific egos. So, most common skills he will be able to outclash, but I wish that it did more damage, right? I wish that it did more damage, like, Opportunistic Slash, uh, where you could go turbo, turbo crazy with the damage because opportunistic slash hits like a monster truck right uh anyways uh on hit inflict four that's pretty good for a single coin on hit inflict rupture count by the amount of k corp ampule deal plus five percent more damage for k corp ampule uh let's see one of the major things is how much ampule can he have before he dies right uh because this is a major uh game like deal breaker uh so let's read turn start at less than four counts heal by a uh, count by five percent of max hp so at less than four at four plus the unit dies that's so low that's so low dude four plus so you're this the ampule will only ever heal for a maximum of 15 percent of health per turn and that means that this skill is capped out at 15% extra damage. Man, like, I'm not going to say it doesn't make sense, but, like, it's crazy how they wanted Spice Bush Esong's passive to be 30% extra damage on an AoE skill, on all AoE skills. And then they turn around, and then they're scared to give ampule good numbers right like why are they giving spice bush isong who has a aoe skill on a basic ability a 30 percent damage boost right and he has two aoe e or three aoe egos right and it's a 30 percent damage boost on aoe skills and then they turn around and they give ampule a 15 percent maximum with the caveat that if you overstack it you fucking die like that's so sad man that's so sad uh, defense skill, I assume it gives one ampule. I I would like it for it to give two, but that's mad coping, right? Yeah, that's mad coping. Ugh. Because, like, ampule is pretty... We'll see with the passive, because, that again, the passive and the guard skill are his only ways to gain ampule. And the way that it's shaking out, if they're capping it at four, uh, I assume it's hard to get ampule, right? I assume it's hard to get Ampule if they're capping it at such a low number, which is kind of scary because that's kind of what he seems to want to get going. So I hope that the passive threshold is like not too bad, but uh, it's looking a little, I don't want to say grim, but it's looking about what I expected, which is not a great thing, right? It's not like a good thing. Uh, so... Regeneration, Ampule Activation, 5 Glut Owned, which is very nice. Again, Gluttony Skill 2, so he'll be generating Gluttony, and it's on Owned, which means it's always on. Very nice. When hit, if at less than 20% health, heal by 90% of max health, and gain 1 Ampule. After this activates, gain 1 Fragile every turn for the rest of the battle. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh... 20%? It's so low. It's even lower than a she section ID. It's so low. I mean, he heals to full, though, which is really funny. Uh, he It is really funny that he heals literally to full HP. So he can at least combo into the skill 3 bonus coin power very easily. 
uh, after activating the passive. But, like, dude, 20% health? Like, how can you expect me to set that up, man? <laughs> like, how can you expect me to set that up? 20% is so low. And then support, uh, high-grade ampule, resonance. Give two to the ally with the lowest HP percentage. So it's on resonance, which is a saving grace, because most of the time, I feel like you don't want to be... Like, if it was on owned, uh, you would basically be screwed if you were doing, like, uh, only a few centers or, like, a solo run. You'd be basically screwed. So, yeah, I mean, like, on resonance, it's good. I mean, it's not, it's actually a better passive than I thought it would be, which is, you know, saying something. But it's not like, it's, it's obviously not stellar because healing is not super sought after in the game right now. Uh, because most of the meta kind of revolves around like, don't take damage in the first place. Or if you do take damage, we have tools like Fluid Sack in order to heal ourselves up for free, uh, basically. So, I mean, like... I don't know. And then the defense skill, like, what what do you want me to do, PM? What do you want me to do? Like, when hit at if less than 20%, like, oh my god, that's so... He has 220 health, man. What is 20% of 218, dude? Uh, 218 over 5, so that's like... Uh, my mental math, my late night mental math is kind of failing me on this one. 218 over 5. Uh, 21, 4, uh, remainder of 1, uh, so, uh, it's, like, about, what is that, about, like, 43-ish, uh, what is that, 43 point, uh, what, 43.6, uh, I guess, so, like, around 44-ish HP, you're telling me I have to go from 218 to 44 health? in order to activate this like you are crazy you are literally crazy man so the only like as far as i can tell the only feasible way to gain ampule is by using defense skill right but the thing is defense skill is not for a couple reasons defense skill is not good obviously you know the defense skill is just worse than using an attack skill because you're not doing damage and the name of the game is damage for the most part uh, so that's one thing. And the second thing is you're basically passing turn. Uh, so you're not clashing to gain sanity, uh, which is, you know, annoying at the very least. Uh, and you're not clashing to gain sanity. Uh, and defense skills for the most part, I think there's one exception. Ninclair's defense skill has a, uh, pride affinity. Defense skills besides that do not have a sin affinity. So by using this, you are gaining literally no value, right? You, you, you're gaining no value for using this. You're skipping a turn on, uh, on Hong Lu and you're gaining like no value, which is really rough because it's, if you have to choose between this and being at 40, like 44 health in order to gain Ampule, it's like, that is like so rough, dude. That is so rough. Thankfully, his kit does not really super rely on the ampulent mechanic. It's just his last coin of a skill, skill 3, which his skill 3 will not come up super often because you only get one copy of it in the deck, obviously. Uh, so, thankfully, he does not really rely heavily on the ampule mechanic. But, like, uh, I feel like the ampule mechanic was the only thing saving him from being, like, not irrelevant, but, you know, not not worth really considering in the meta uh for the most part uh and also it really stings like it's a real uh kick in the teeth that the only way he has to inflict a rupture count which again is the most important thing to have in a rupture id uh if you're trying to build a rupture team the only way that he has to inflict a rupture count is by having ampule uh, which is like, dude, that's a real kick of the teeth, man. Because his hardest mechanic to make work is also the only real synergy that he has in a ruptured team, like, to, to offer. I mean, like, ugh, the, the, I don't know. I mean, 
to be honest his solo potential his solo potential is through the roof though if we're being honest his like his goofy ass like cheese potential because he has an insane amount of health uh and he has an insane amount of life steal and he has the same amount of regeneration with the ampule and the passive healing him to full every time uh that he gets hit uh below 20 percent because i'm assuming this once per battle applies only to the fragile because there's a line break here so i'm assuming that the fragile effect is once per battle and this effect is not once per battle because that would make hardly any sense so i mean he has some serious like solo cheese potential uh but like beyond that beyond like the funny factor uh i mean I hate to say that I'm right because I wish I wasn't right uh, this time because I was low-key kind of excited for him even though he wasn't going to be meta breaking and I knew he wasn't going to be meta breaking probably but I was kind of excited for him because I wanted to see a tank ID work right I wanted to see a tank ID work because I remember on uh, Ncorp like gross hammer mersault release I was like dude this guy is a living like tower bro he's a living brick wall and it is it feels so badass to have like a bunch of enemies hitting you and you just do not care right and you just win with the battle of attrition and that feeling feels pretty good to be honest uh just like it's like goofy but i wanted a tank idea to work and i don't think this idea is going to work unless they design enemies specifically around him so, uh, I hate to say that I was right, uh, about how effective he's going to be, I feel like, but, oh well. I mean, at least he has, like, the Sans Undertale thing going on, I guess. Whatever. Uh, and then, let's check out the new Egos, too, actually. I forgot. Where are the Egos? Uh, Shard Threat. Where are the Egos? Ego? Oh, they're not seasonal. Okay. I was like, dude, I thought they were seasonal when I was looking for it, but uh, they're not seasonal. So we'll look at the numbers for red eyes. Uh, the closed eyes one, I guess. Uh, the spider bud uh, tent tier. One thing I'm really looking for is slash fragility number. I hope it's like, if it's a tent tier ego, I feel like it'll probably be like two slash fragility. Uh, is what I'm looking for. That's like kind of my gut feeling uh, of what they would do is like two slash fragility But if they did it as three slash fragility, that would be really really hype uh, But I'm assuming it's gonna be like two. Oh Yeah, it is two. Uh, how did I know that's crazy uh, on hit inflicts three bind next turn That is kind of significant uh, Three three bind is pretty convenient because speed is the name of the game a lot of the time because having out speed out speeding your opponent means having more control in the battle Right and having more control in the battle means you'll win most of the time like you'll you'll win more of the time So that's good Target is three plus bind inflict one coin drop uh, plus coin drop hardly matters Honestly this debuff like hardly matters uh, I feel like so not a big deal and then if target speed is lower than the users inflict 2 slash fragility So yeah, that's basically exactly what I was anticipating uh, Cost is uh, 2 lust 2 glut 1 envy so pretty cheap pretty cheap to just throw out there uh, Which is you know, which is nice to see pretty cheap to just throw out there because cheap setup tools uh, a setup tool being cheap means that you can use it very very often just to squeeze out small increments of damage like you don't need to use it on a huge nuke turn because you know if it was super expensive you would only use it on big nuke turns uh you can use this to just squeeze out a little bit of damage uh sometimes which is honestly more convenient uh than having a big nuke like setup tool so i welcome this i welcome this and then the corrosion uh Everything looks the same. This is plus two. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, 18 plus six. Yeah, I mean, 24. I mean, that for, like, we already know. Ego ego coin values, like, hardly matter, to be honest. Unless it's a damaging ego. Like, AoEs, the coin values really matter. But, you know, on single target, it is what it is, right? We don't really care that much. Uh, and then 26 minus eight. Sure, about what I expected. Uh, 
it inflicts two, and then if target speed is lower than uses, inflict one to three slash fragility. Bro, like, what is this goofy ah slash fragility RNG? <laughs> what the hell is that, man? What the hell is that? <laughs> I mean, like, you're never going to be corroding this thing, to be fair. Uh, you're, you're literally never corro- There's no point in, uh, overclocking this thing. Uh, so... You know, I mean, that is just, it's just really funny to see, if anything. Like, it's just funny, uh, more than anything. So, uh, passive, on Clash Wind, inflict one bind next turn, three times per turn. Just very convenient. Again, bind is an appreciated debuff. It's not, like, super important or anything, but it is an appreciated debuff. It's not, like, worthless, right? It's not, like, plus coin drop, um, or, like, paralysis, where, like, we can mostly ignore it uh bind is like it bind is bind is nice it is a nice debuff so this ego looks very good right this ego looks very good uh and then the aoe skill is also very very exciting very exciting uh extremely cheap wow extremely cheap two wrath two lust three envy wow 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 bro that is extremely cheap uh for an aoe because it's not intensive on any one single sin resource so odds are like if you have a balanced a more balanced sin uh bank like resource bank you'll be able to use this thing multiple times uh which is very cool uh 22 plus 8 so 30 i believe that's even more uh coin power than ebony queen ebony stem yeah, 22 plus 7. So it has more base power. It has, like, more uh, base power slash coin power than Ebony Stem does. Uh, targets 3. If target main target speed is lower, then uses by 3 or more coin power plus 4. I don't think they specified, like... Uh, I don't remember if they specified that it was going to be lower than X or more. Uh, they might have. I just don't remember. But... Three or more is really, really tough to accomplish without bind because you can't high roll it. And the reason you can't really high roll it is because uh, Ryoshu's IDs all have pretty normal speed values. Like three to six is average. Uh, uh, three to six, again, average. Uh, you're not using base, but she has three to six as well. And then seven section has three to five, which is below average. So ryoshu herself is not going to be able to uh accomplish this without bind synergy which thankfully she has uh with the other uh with the tet tier ego so it's not a big deal or, or anything uh and she also has some bind synergy in her own kit with uh uh what comes to mind is uh uh, her skill 2, Ingredient Hunt, inflicts 1 bind. People seem to gloss over this, but it is very helpful, uh, just to have. So, you know, we appreciate 1 bind, uh, even more now, because it could help you get over that threshold sometimes if you get a little lucky. So, that is nice. Uh, if target is 3 plus bind, deal 20% damage. If target- if this still staggers or defeats, heal user and ally with at least- oh, wow. Wait, this ego is really, really good. Like, really good. Like, 20% extra damage is really nuts. Considering it already has a uh, similar coin power to Ebony Stem. Granted, Ebony Stem hits 5 people. This only hits 3 people. Uh, but most of the time, the 5 people... Like, the 5 uh, target threshold is not like super important it does come up i'm not gonna act like it's unimportant because on certain abnos like headless ichthys was the example from line one headless ichthys had like four different parts or like five different parts and ebony stem absolutely shredded that boss uh so you know it uh, uh it it is not insignificant right but uh, it is it is still very good and 20% extra damage is nuts. So let's take a look at the corrosion 33 minus 14 I mean again, you're probably not overclocking uh, These egos to be honest uh, So if targets speed is lower than users by three or more coin power plus seven plus seven so it's a minus coin, but it's plus seven which is I mean, like, it helps, but the thing is, you're tr if you're corroding this or overclocking this, you're not trying to hit heads, right? You're not trying to hit heads, 
so this ends up literally not mattering at all right this literally ends up not mattering at all because this going from negative 14 to negative 7 does not matter if you hit tails right it does not increase the power of the skill if you hit tails so this ends up literally being useless like irrelevant uh 30 percent damage uh heal by 10 percent okay so it does a little bit more damage maybe uh but nothing like nothing nuts uh again you're probably not overclocking this uh, and then if the unit healed more than 10% of it, 10% is very easy to achieve actually. Gain one attack power up. So this is, it's like free. It's, it's kind of free. Again, healing is a little bit hard to come by, uh, outside of specific, like, outside of you going out and explicitly trying to heal, uh, with like fluid sack or, you know, her passive, like chef passive popping, uh, and giving you health. Healing is a little bit hard to come by unless you're consciously uh, trying to heal, right? So, this is probably not going to come up super often uh, beyond, like, when this uh, staggers a target, which will happen often, I feel like, because of the high power. Uh, so, you know, she'll stagger the target and then she'll have a huge follow-up the next turn, which is nice. You know, it's nice. And if it staggers multiple targets, this is not a once per turn. So she could get multiple attack power up, which is nice. So overall, uh, Spider Bud uh, Ego is looking about as great as I expected. So that can only, this can only mean one thing, right? It's time to pull uh, Gotcha. Uh, one of the major things in this game, by the way, uh, just so you know, don't pull on Ego banners. The, the Ego banners are traps. Uh, they are the, they are the, like, bait banners in this game, right? Do not pull on ego banners. The reason why you don't pull on ego banners is because, uh, the odds of you pulling the quote-unquote the chase unit is literally still less than one-third of a percent, right? Uh, the, the odds of you pulling a chase unit is 0.3, right? Which is, like, completely awful, like, it's atrocious, so... You, you only really want to pull on ID banners and then just dispense the Ego banners because the ID banners have a much better rate of 1.5-ish uh, percent. So do not pull on Ego banners. Always dispense Egos if you're looking for them or just hope you RNG pull them, right? But, uh, you know, uh, I I don't know if I'll go super deep for K-Corp Pong Lu, but he is pretty funny, so maybe I will. We'll see. Uh, we'll see how much lunacy I'll, I'll have by the end of this, huh? But, I hope this is Sinclair. Uh, unfortunate. But, we'll just keep going. Uh, I think there's tickets in the pass, actually. I should probably use those. Uh, here. Oh, there's also, uh, a Season 2 ticket. Uh, so I'll grab these tickets, I guess. And any more in here? Uh, there's some more over here. I mean, I could just hit claim all. Honestly, I feel like it might be, uh, it might bug you people. It might bug you guys, so maybe I'll hit claim all. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll just receive all. It's gonna play like three different cutscenes. Well, I, I kind of want to watch them through, because I like the, uh, I like the live 2D on these, so, you know, uh, we'll watch them through. That is a lot of loot. That is a lot of loot. Love to see it. Thanks for the banner. Uh, so, actually, wait. Today's the 29th. Does that mean that the the offense level changes went through? No, no, they did not. Okay, I don't remember when they said they were going to do those. I think it was later. I think it was. Uh, I think it was much later. Uh, but I hardly remember. Uh, you know, I'll uh, I'll equip these new egos. Sure. Uh, Sunyata is trash anyway. So uh, yeah. Okay. Enough stalling. Enough stalling. <laughs> enough stalling. Let's get back. Let's get back to the uh, the topic at hand. Of course. 
There's Sinclair, very nice. Kyoko. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep going for it, I guess. My luck has been pretty good uh, in the past few banners historically, so uh, I expect us to not get it super early. I might do a few more multis, but I'm not really go. I'm not rolling like all the way down for K Corp Pong Lu. I think if I get down to like, uh, how much? How much am I? Oh, I unlocked Blade Lineage Otis. That's hype. If I get down to like, like 15k, maybe I'll stop. Uh. I still don't own Liu Mersault either, by the way, uh, which is kind of funny. Oh, here we go. Maybe some promising uh, stuff. Alright, nice. Mm. Very cool. I'll make sure to grab a screenshot for the uh, thumbnail, too. There we go. I'll, I'll grab a few just in case. You know, high resolution and all that. So, we can stop rolling now, which is cool. Uh, very nice. I only have to roll down a little bit. Uh, let's check out, uh... Oh, right, I got, like, a bunch of borders, too. Uh, cool. Uh, cool. Why is this still exclamation part? Okay. And then, yeah, okay, cool. Rainy day. That looks kind of nice, actually. And then, let's see what we unlock here. We unlocked a bunch of stuff. I, I skipped over a bunch of it, apparently. You're finally ordering my much attack to blank. Sure. Uh, this way, attention, umbrella deployment talisman, sure, okay, uh, whatever. And then, we shall, uh, I don't know, do I wanna, do I wanna play Mirror Dungeon 2? I feel like, how long is this video already? Uh, this video's 51 minutes, Jesus, what the hell am I waffling on about for so long, god damn. Uh, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll make a video some other time, uh, about it, to be honest. Because now there's no daily, there's no daily, like, free entry on Mirror Dungeon anymore. So I can do these three whenever I want. So, you know, maybe I'll do it tomorrow after I get some sleep. Uh, I'm considering, honestly, uptying this guy just so we can try him in the new Mirror Dungeon. But, uh, you know, maybe, maybe. I think, if anything, if nothing else, he's going to be more fun to use than Kurokumo and Ting Tang, because these two are literally, like, brainless to use. Like, they're OP, but they're not fun. Like, their gameplay flow is not fun to use. Like, Rabbit is super OP, uh, obviously, but I like using him. Like, I think he's fun to use, because he has a clear gameplay flow, right? Uh, you, it, like, just hitting Body Sack into Quick Suppression, or using the Body Sack passive to gain a turbo-boosted Quick Suppression, uh, it just feels good to do, right? It just feels good to do. And same thing with Sinclair, like, he has a very, very clear gameplay flow. Uh, you know, you, you open the battle, maybe with Impending Day to nuke your sanity at the start, then you use Coerce Judgment, uh, to gain Fanatic or something, and then you go in with Self-Destructive Purge with a Gaze Synergy, maybe, uh, and that feels like very satisfying to do, right? Like, he has a very clear flow in his gameplay, right? Ting Tang and Kurokumo don't really have a gameplay flow. It's literally, their gameplay boils down to, I see button, I see cloud cutter, I click button, right? Uh, I see shank, I click button, right? Uh, and it's like, oh, well, there's a condition on it. Yeah, dude, the condition, like, hardly matters most of the time. If you're on an Abno fight, it goes off 90% of the time. If you're in a human fight, just don't use Tink Tang in human fights. <laughs> like, if you're in a human fight, you're just, you're just trolling if you're bringing him, pretty much, I think. I think you would just always bring Kurokumo if you're human fighting. Uh, and then Mutilate uh, is cool. I like the animation and everything. Uh, and I like the reset mechanic, but, like... He doesn't really have depth to his gameplay. At least K Corp Hong Lu has a lot of uh, a lot of depth in his gameplay, right? He ha he actually has things going on. He has things to think about, and he has a real flow. Like he has a tangible he has a tangible flow in his gameplay, where you know you want to get you want to lose a bunch of health, gain ampule, skip a turn. Still seems trolled. I can't be I cannot get past the skip a turn to gain ampule. Uh, that like sucks, bro. But uh, he has he has gameplay flow in him, uh, and he has actual synergy because the other two IDs don't have any team play, 
uh, essentially. They are literally, they are solo stat sticks is what they are, right? They are stat sticks. Uh, and, you know, stat sticks are pretty strong, uh, but they're not the most interesting to use uh, a lot of the time. So, you know, I'll definitely try him. Maybe I'll record a video uh, using him and using Talisman Claire, uh, probably in the new Mirror Dungeon, if anything. Uh, so we can knock two birds out with one stone. But, you know, until then, uh, until then, uh, I think that's it. Actually, wait, I, I should probably dispense these, right? Uh, I'll do it later, maybe. I'll do it, I'll do it later. Uh, when I do Mirror Dungeon 2, I'll do it. And I'll also uptie these, uh, off camera, I guess, so that you don't have to, you don't have to, uh, you know, wait, uh, wait for the pause, the awkward cut until after I skip the story and whatnot, you know? So... Until next time, this, this is a long ass video, geez.